people come up with different excuses for not meditating. And one of the most common ones is that their minds are too scattered to meditate, which is like saying you're too sick to go to see the doctor, or you're too sick to take your medicine. The whole point of practicing meditation is you're going to change your habits. The fact that your mind is scattered is a habit that you've been developing. And unfortunately, our culture seems to be really pushing people in that direction, with a lot of multitasking and multi-playing, multi-entertainment, multi-conversations going on all the time. The person you're talking to, the person you're texting, usually at the same time. The mind gets fragmented all over the place. It develops a lot of really bad habits. And so if you see that your habits of mind are heading in that direction, you've got to take the initiative in changing them, realizing that the habits are the things that go with you. You can stay here and have lots of nice material things, and here we are in a very pleasant environment. It's quiet. The air is good. Right now the temperature is just right. But those aren't things you can take with you. What you can take with you are the habits you develop. So right now we're developing a habit of truthfulness. In other words, we make up our mind we're going to do something good and we try to stick with it. And even when it gets difficult, you try to do your best. Take coming back, coming back. We're going to stay with the breath. That's what we've got in mind right now. And then you try to figure out how to do it. It's not just through force of will that the mind is going to stay. You need strategies. You need tactics. This is why we work with the breath energy, trying to make it interesting, trying to make it comfortable, learning how to use the breath to compensate for whatever's wrong with the body right now. The change in the air pressure today. A lot of us got headaches. Well, you can breathe in a way that can compensate for that. I've found often that if you breathe really deeply and expand your abdomen as much as you can, even to the point of being a little bit painful, keep that up for a while. You oxygenate the blood and you feel a lot better. When you're tired, what way of breathing gives you energy? When you're feeling tense, what kind of breathing relaxes you? This is something you can learn by watching the breath. It's not just in, out, in, out, in, out. There are qualities to the breath. And the breath has its impact. And this is where you're going to learn about karma. You intend to breathe in a certain way and then see what happens with that intention. If it's not skillful, it's not getting the results you want, then you change. This is how we learn, by experimenting. So this is an experiment we're working with right now to see what ways we can get the mind interested in the breath and what ways we can use that interest to help with the body, help with the mind. And we stick with this. We've got a whole hour, which is not much time, you realize, out of a day. Twenty-four hours in one day, how many hours do you meditate? And if you're developing one kind of habit as you go through the day and then try to develop another kind of habit when you meditate, it's going to be difficult. But if you realize it's the same mind that's meditating right now is the same one that speaks to other people, that's the same mind that runs your body, that makes plans for the future, that thinks about the past, it's all the same mind. What are the habits of the mind? The Thai word for habit, Nisai, comes from the Pali word, dependence. In other words, when the young monk goes to live with the senior monk. He lives in dependence on that person. It's the same relationship as in the West we used to have between masters and apprentices. The apprentice tried to help the master and at the same time learned, was trying to learn how to pick up skills. And the skills involved a lot of habits, how you approach something.
And then there's someone one time who'd gone to study how to make pottery with a, one of those living national treasures in Japan. And when she first got there, she was very discouraged. You know, she'd put her pots into the kiln, and the next day they'd come out, and lots of them would be broken, burned, whatever. And his pots were always coming out perfect, perfect, perfect every time. And she was wondering how she could learn anything from him. Until one day that she came into the kiln and discovered that his pots had burned. And he was sitting there trying to figure it out. What had he done wrong? And she realized that was the habit she needed to build up from him. She needed to pick up from him. It was when something goes wrong, you don't get discouraged. You just go and look at it, try to figure it out. This is a really important habit. And it applies not only when you're working with manual skills, I mean, the whole skills of your life. You want to look at the way you speak with other people, the way you interact with other people. Is it working? Is it not? Are you drawing people to you or are you driving them away by your habits? I mean, sometimes we can intentionally drive people away, but other times it seems to be that we try to be nice, but some, for some reason people go away. Well, what are we doing? What are we saying? Just look at ourselves. And the ability to look at yourself in all, in all fairness and to admit your mistakes, that's how you grow. And that's the habit you want. In other words, you don't get knocked over by your own unskillful behavior or the results of your own unskillful behavior. You pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep going. Remember reading about a Olympic swimmer who was expected to sweep all the gold medals in one, one of the meets. And the very first of the race that he swam in, he didn't get the gold medal. And all the commentators were saying, oh, that's it, he's going to go into a downward spiral now. And his coach said, no, that's not the kind of person he is. And sure enough, he won all the remaining races. He didn't let that one setback knock him off course. So when things don't go well, Stop. Look. See what you're doing wrong. And be true to yourself. Remember when the Buddha was teaching Rahula, the first thing he said about looking at your own behavior is that you learn to be truthful. Of all the precepts, this is the most important. It means being true both to yourself and to other people. Only when you can admit the truth can you learn from the truth and then learn other truths that you hadn't known before. This is a habit you've got to develop. And so here we are working on this habit. We've made up our minds we're going to stay here with the breath. And if the mind wanders off, you bring it back. If it wanders off again, you bring it back again. Five times, ten times, until the point where you lose count. You keep bringing it back and ask yourself, well, why does it keep wandering off? What can I change in the breath? What can I change in the way I approach things? Sometimes you get back to the breath and you're like an addict to say, okay, I slipped off then, but I'm not going to go back ever again. And then five minutes later, you find yourself off. Just like the addict who's decided he's not going to smoke pot and he swears up and down, I'm a new person. And then the next thing you know, you hear him say, whoops, well, I fell again. If you know that you have a tendency to fall, watch out for it. Anticipate it. Look for the warning signs. And the important thing is that you not get overwhelmed by the fact that things are not going well. Because look at human life. Things don't go well in human life. The body ages, gets sick, and dies. Nobody wants that, but it happens. And we have to develop the kind of habit that's not phased by aging, it's not phased by illness, not even phased by death. You try to develop that warrior spirit that's not overwhelmed by anything. When the battle's not going well, the people who run away are sure to lose. And when the battle, it's not that great soldiers are the ones who 
never have setbacks. They have setbacks, but they learn how not to get overwhelmed by them. Take them as a challenge. And so aging is a setback. Illness is a setback. Death is the ultimate. But you don't have to be overwhelmed by it. This is the good this is the good news offered by the Buddha. That we can train the mind so that none of these things will phase you. None of them will overwhelm you. So you keep working away and away and away at this habit of being truthful, not letting setbacks knock you off course. You just keep coming back, coming back. There's that story about the young man in the Midwest who was going to come out to California and try his try his luck at, I think it was the movie industry. And he had a Zen teacher, and he went to see his Zen teacher, and the te Zen teacher said, what, what are you going to do if you get there and things don't go well? And The guy said, well, I guess I'll just have to accept it. And the teacher said, no. They knock you down, you get back up again. They knock you down again, you get back up again. That's the kind of habit you want to develop. And where are you going to develop? By developing strength of mind. How do you develop strength of mind? It's what we're doing right here, right now. Getting the mind to stay in one place. And strength isn't just brute force. Strength comes from your conviction, your persistence, your mindfulness, your concentration, your discernment, figuring things out is the ultimate strength of the five strengths that Buddha talked about. Discernment is the big one. And John Lee has a nice quote. He says, a person with discernment, all you need is a machete and you can set yourself up in life, even if you have nothing else. The discernment is what will see you through, and that is a strength, which means if the mind is being recalcitrant, you don't just push, push, push. You try to figure out well, what's the problem. An experiment. Try things. But you keep at it again and again and again, knowing that this is a problem that can be solved. And if you don't see the solution quite yet, you just keep looking, looking, looking. You don't give up. That's the kind of habit you want to develop. That's when you have the habit of a meditator. <laughs>